Awesome, guys. I think I'm live. Um, hopefully, uh, somebody will let me know if I'm not. But uh, it's uh, it's good to be here. Uh, today, I'll be talking about my front-end core experience so far for development and why I think you should start developing. So earlier today, um, Hunter kind of went through and talked about what you can do to get started, what you can do to um, to to get started with your first PR, with you know getting into development, with getting into Home Assistant and all that. And I'm going to tell you kind of why you should do that. Um, first, a little bit about me. Um, I am 24 years old. I live in Austin, Texas. Um, I currently work for a low-code platform company called Zudi. And uh, I'm the senior sales consultant there and an application architect. Um, and for that, you know, I, can't, I don't do any coding there. It's a low-code, no-code platform. So I was always having that itch to to do some more programming as I came from a computer science background, came from the from college. Um, and that's kind of like what I decided to do for Home Assistant is come in, do some front end work. And that's that's what I do is um, for Home Assistant. I help build out Lovelace. I help build out the UI editors, kind of plan everything with Rom and Paulus and all the other developers involved. And we kind of build out the UI for the for Home Assistant. Let's go ahead and get into kind of how I got started. Um, and I probably got started very similar to how a lot of other people got started. It was you start, you, you get Home Assistant, you get your Raspberry Pi, and you start uh, tinkering and, and you see everything. And then you see that Home Assistant is open source. And if you're a developer, it, that, that's kind of a big thing in the developer world. And I'd always heard about it and heard people that, that did it, but it was more like, you know, I'd never done it myself or it was something that I'd, I'd wanted to do, but I'm not sharing my uh, screen, am I? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So slides. Now we have the slides up. This is live. This is great. <laughs> um, but, and for some reason, I can't see chat. Let me. There we go. And it switched back. Okay. Slide. Or my chat doesn't work. Cool. Um, but. I started developing. I, I got started developing because I wanted to to do open source. It was, you know, I was intrigued by the idea, and I, you know, never done it before. But I'd heard a lot of people doing it. Um, I started this. I started actually during Hacktoberfest of 2018, which is always what I think is a great way for people to get involved. Hacktoberfest um, is really inviting for a lot of developers, and it gets you out there and can get you. Um, it's a good foot in the door because um, a lot of people, a lot of people, get into Hacktoberfest with some easy PRs, maybe some little bug fixes or a little tiny feature request, and kind of learn the the process, and then go from there. And that's kind of what I did. Um, my first PR was the adding the gauge card to the Lovelace to Lovelace dashboard. So, meaning I I created the card from the card that already existed, but I kind of merged it over and, and made it into the core front end. Um, I can't remember exactly who built out the custom one in the beginning. Um, I forgot to look that up, but I took kind of his code and that person's co code and, and converted it to be a core code and took out some features, um, added some stuff, made it you know more simplified and put it into core. Um, but before then, I'd actually done a little bit of custom work for Home Assistant, just some some random cards. I don't even remember what they were. Um, they were very useful, but they were just kind of helped me get a little bit of my foot in the door of JavaScript and, and how the Home Assistant cards kind of work. Um, but then, um, you know, I sent this in and within a few days, I got it back and there were just reviews after reviews after reviews after reviews. Right. Um, so. I looked at it and I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> this code is not good. I mean, like I, I sent something and they don't like it. But then I started reading the reviews and um, it was more or less, oh, hey, this would be great if you changed this because it would help you with, you know, would help us do this. Um, it'd be better if you changed the code to be um, this way because it would be make the code more efficient. Um, and that kind of helped me to the point where I was able to to say, okay, they're not, you know, they're not telling me my code is not good. 
they're telling me my um they're telling me how to make it a little bit better so what i took from that was okay i need to learn a little bit more right and what those code reviews always help me is learning a little bit more so um the people who were reviewing and i think it was paulus and fabian back in the day they were um they were very inviting and knowledgeable about their reviews so they were able to help me kind of morph my code into better so after those 43 comments and i was able to to kind of get my code into a working spot i got my dolphin which is what you get whenever you push your first um pr to home assistant and uh paulus merged it into front end and that was my first lovelace con- contribution I was able to get that in there and it felt really good afterwards i felt you know accomplishment and that i'd actually done something with my coding experience and i was able to get it in there so that was my first let's go into a little bit about how that helps home assistant you know it while it helped me and i'll get into how it can help you a little bit more but how does that actually help home assistant what is what are you doing for home assistant because while we all we, we all love home assistant we always want to make it better and we always want to see it get better so let's get into that. What we're doing is we are developing and making, um, we're making Home Assistant to a place where we think it's better. So what that means is I will go in there and I'll, I'll use Home Assistant. And I'll be like, oh, I don't like the way that this UI works, or I wish it was a little bit differently. And I'll go in and I'll say, okay, well, I know how to do code. I know how to program. I know how I know JavaScript. I can just do that myself instead of going through, um, going through and putting in a pull re- or a, a feature request, which is not bad. But instead of doing that, you go in there and try and make it better yourself. Whether that's through a custom card or not, if you contribute to Core, you're helping everybody else who also uses Home Assistant. Anything that you put into Core is also going to help everyone else. So, like we put in UI editors. Everyone else now can use those UI editors to make their Lovelace dashboard better. You know, we created automation uh, editors. Everyone can now use that. And that's awesome, right? That's always the best for me is saying, I'm going to put this in because I think it should be in there because I think it would help me. But I know it's going to help all these other people because now it's in the core, it's in core home assistant and it's going to be shipped with the next release. And everyone gets that. I think that's the best part, right? You get a good feeling. Um, and Home Assistant didn't just grow from the eight employees they have in Navacasa, right? They it grew because of all these community developers, eight thousand of them, I think, in the last what year or something. I don't remember. I think it was uh, Paula said it was contributors total eight thousand. That's insane. Home Assistant gets there because of these people, because of you, because of people willing to put in time and make Home Assistant better. Even Paulus, right? Not all of the Namukasa guys were Home Assistant developers first, contributors, developers, and then Namukasa employees. Every single one of them, right? They all helped. They all made it better. And then they became Namukasa employees. Now, are they just Namukasa employees? No, they're actually Home Assistant developers first, Namukasa employees second. They still have their Home Assistant mind. They still have the Home Assistant community in mind. They know that if you know we build out this thing it's going to help the community and that's what they're going for right and home assistant is going to continue to grow because of these people because of people going in making home assistant better whether that's for themselves or not it's going to help for everyone um and if that means a new integration because i'm not just talking about front end here back end if the new integration because you bought a product and you want that to be in Home Assistant. If you add that integration to Home Assistant, now that's added for everyone else and they can use that. And that's awesome. You can make the UI better. You can even make the developer docs better. It doesn't matter what you're helping. You're helping everyone if you continue doing what you're doing. So um, let's see, where am I? And for example, UI for the uh, for Home Assistant, Quick Bar. Donnie put in the Quick Bar, right? Helps everyone. Everyone loves it. That satisfaction of helping everyone is 
part like no you can't you can't meet uh, you can't reach it um let's see losing my place okay let's just keep going how does this help you because i know everybody wants to help themselves at the same point right first of all we kind of touched on it you're putting in a feature that's going to help you in the first place i mean some developers and i i you know i I like helping other people, even though I'm not going to get features from it. But if you're contributing for the first time, I would recommend you do something that you think is going to help yourself. That'll help you be more inspired to do it and more um, active about the development, right? So whether you're a front end, back end dev, a documentation, documentation contributor, you're providing that value to Home Assistant and you're getting that value back. But why, you know, why does that help you? First, I talked about it. It's going to help you in a way because you are getting those code reviews. If you're a programmer, you want code reviews. I know a lot of people get scared when they get their code reviews back and everything. And, you know, oh, it's, they don't like my code. No, it's the code is great. You know, the contribution is great, but we also want to help you get better at coding. And we also want you to be better. We, we, you know, we're not going to make Home Assistant just open to everyone to push whatever code they want. We want to make sure the Home Assistant has the best code that's available. So when we give those reviews, it's helping you and it's helping Home Assistant. Once that you get that review once, now you know in your head, okay, I, I, I know this is how we should do this. And I can make this in the future. I can, I can do this in the future. I don't have to you know, be reviewed on that section again. Now you're a better programmer, right? Um, you get better coding skills. I know people who started contributing to the front end and to the back end and their field, let's say they're in manufacturing or something because they started doing coding, they changed their field of work. So they stopped being a manufacturer and started looking for new jobs in coding and programming. And they used and leveraged their contributions from home assistant to get that job to, to push forward and say, I am, you know, I'm not just some programmer who's done nothing and wants to be a programmer. Here's, here's examples of what I've done. And you can see that within the code. Um, another thing is it makes your resume look amazing, right? If you can learn Git, which is probably the hardest part, but it's not scary. Um, GitHub makes tools that make it a lot easier for you. And um, Git is not scary. There's a few lines, unless you get into the complicated stuff, which you don't need to, then it, it is pretty easy. There's a few things. Um, like a few lines that you just go over all the time and it'll, you know, that's, that's the lines that you use every single day, your language proficiency. I'm doing JavaScript and TypeScript right now for home assistant. And it is greatly improved my proficiency in these languages. Like I would know where it'd be nowhere near where I am now. If it wasn't for home assistant, collaborating in teams, that's always a nice soft skill to put on your resume that you've done before. I can be in these teams i can work well with everyone and you know that's something that people look for um reviewing code once you get better at developing and putting in the code you can start reviewing code i've started reviewing code recently and it's helped me become a better developer because i know what to look for and i can help other people and that's another thing you can put on your resume um and developing for home assistant helps you with real life programming in school you learn how to make little tiny projects, but it's not towards real life issues. This is setting forward to, I helped program develop this and it's actually doing something. It's applicable, right? And um, if you are a new developer coming out of college, just getting started, I highly recommend, I highly recommend everyone, but I highly recommend these people to join open source, whether it's home assistant or not. You know, home, open source is great. It'll help you get these real life coding experiences and help you jump ahead of everyone else in the job search. And, the, you know, your competition is, the you know, what you're going for. You you want to beat out that competition. It doesn't have to be, con it doesn't have to be con home assistant. Just do something open source and you'll get there. But home assistant is a great option because we all use it and love it. Last thing, thank you, home assistant. Thank you guys. And thank you, Navakasa, for all the great stuff we do for you all do for Home Assistant. And it's amazing. I'll be in a QA session right after this. If you go to sessions, go to QA, I'll be answering any of the questions. I saw some come in, but I just don't have time to do with them all right now. About five minutes there. Talk to you guys later.